All right, I think we are about ready to begin. I want to say good morning and good afternoon to everyone on the East Coast. I want to thank everybody who's joining us. We have another great turnout for the uh, latest webinar in the Nimble Lecture Series, Enhancing S4 HANA End User Adoption with SAP UEM by NOAA. My name is Jake Eisberg. I'm part of the marketing team. A little bit about us. Uh, we are SAP technologists here at Nimble and SAP ecosystem thought leaders. Our consulting business, which is 50% uh, of our work, delivers SAP projects, both technical and functional, while our Denver-based SAP managed services, the other 50%, supports both Fortune 1000 admin markets. Uh, here are a couple of the skill sets that we have. Among others, obviously today we'll be talking about S4 HANA as well as uh, UEM NOAA. Uh, and before we start, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we want to be able to answer as many questions as possible. So uh, please, if you did look in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see the chat box. Feel free to type in any questions that you have for uh, Jesse or Mike, and they will be answered at the end of the presentation. And a little bit about our presenters. Uh, we have Jesse Brunel from uh, SAP. and. Uh, it's actually Michael Pytel, apologies, uh, from, uh, from Nimble. Jesse recently joined SAP Education as a Solutions Engineer, Senior Solutions Engineer. Before joining SAP, he worked at Johns Mansville and led a multi-year implementation of a single service delivery, or delivery organization. And uh, Michael Pytel is a certified SAP NetWeaver, SAP HANA, and SAP Solution Manager resource, possessing over 10 years of technical SAP implementation expertise. Uh, he is a frequent speaker across the country, as well as author of SAP Press's Implementing SAP Business Suite on SAP HANA. And again, before we begin, we got, kind of want to get a lay of the land. So we're going to throw out a couple uh, questions so that our speakers can uh, Kind of feel who's, uh, who's in the audience and where you are right now. So our first poll question is, uh, what is your current S4 HANA schedule? Are you looking at 0 to 6 months, 6 to 12 months, 12 to 18 months, over 18 months, or you are currently not considering S4 HANA at the time? We'll give everybody a little bit of time to fill those out. All right, looks like it's pretty spread out. Okay. The next question is, are you currently considering S4 HANA Cloud? We know that some people are looking for on-prem and others are considering uh, taking it uh, to the cloud as well. And this looks like it's split right down the middle 50-50. All right. And our final poll question before we start up, are you familiar with uh, User Experience Management or UEM by NOAA? Yes, no, yes, we are currently using it, or yes, we are considering it. All right, great. So at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Michael Pytel. Mike, go ahead and take it away. Fantastic, Jake. Thank you for the intro. And uh, everybody, welcome today. Super excited to have Jesse on the phone call. Um, I have had the opportunity to work with Jesse as a uh, as consultant and customer. I've had the opportunity to work with him as uh, partners. Uh, and and uh, he's just a wonderful individual and super knowledgeable in the space of user experience and end user training. Um, so I'm super excited. You know, I wanted to talk real quick about S4 and the S4 roadmap and getting S4 implemented before we dive into end user adoption. I want to kind of paint the picture of where is the S4 roadmap today, what does an S4 project look like, what does the UX transition look like, and then dive into some tools that are going to help customers uh, uh, with these projects. Now, for those of you that have read my blogs or followed us before, know that I am one that is uh, open to – I am more I, – I try to reinforce the message of, of customers maximizing the value of their enterprise maintenance. Uh, it is very rare that – you will find that Dimble will recommend a third-party product or another pay product as part of their SAP maintenance, right? We've, we're, we're big in the use of Solution Manager uh, in terms of running projects, managing change on projects, implementing change on projects. Uh, but there is a, uh, a gap in the marketplace where Solution Manager doesn't really have a, a tool that helps us monitor and measure how end users are using the system. You know, whether it's ERP or S4, Solution Manager can tell us 
what T code people are, have, have executed, uh, but the information stops there. We don't know what data they're putting into the T code. We don't know how many warning messages that we're getting. So we're going to get to that in a little bit later. Now, for S4, just to bring everybody up to speed, you have S4 1709 being released this month. And now the important message there to know is that after uh, feature pack SAC 02 for S4 HANA 1610, essentially S4 HANA 1610 will re receive no more innovation. And that is a very key point. Uh, for those of you looking to plan your S4 HANA migration in the next 6 to 12 months, I want you to throw the N-1 strategy of software uh, implementation out the window. We have, uh, uh, you know, in the IT industry, we have this consistent message of uh, take whatever is currently available and go, go, go with the prior version. Um, it would be silly uh, for a customer uh, starting a project in the next six months to start their project with S4 HANA 1610. It, you absolutely must take advantage of S4 HANA 1709 because, again, SAP will be offering two feature pack stacks with S4 1709, and only those two feature pack stacks will include innovations before it enters in the maintenance line item. So uh, the main message I want you uh, thinking about right now is for those of you planning your S4 migration, S4 HANA 1610 has received the, uh, the limit, essentially, of its innovations that are going to be offered as part of that as part of feature pack stacks, and it is moving into the support package stack maintenance line moving forward from Q4 2017 forward. Uh, S4 HANA 1709 is our new go-to release. It continues to build upon uh, the success of S4 HANA 1610, which was a solid release of S4, and, and we've enjoyed a lot of success implementing it. Um, for those of you thinking about the conversion, just wanted to also remind you that uh, if, you, if you are Unicode uh, on any database, on any release of ERP 6.0, um, naturally there are always asterisks, right? We, we all work in the SAP world. We know that there's going to be multiple notes to read, and we know that there's asterisks as to what you can and can't do. But in general, if you're running ERP 6, Enhancement Pack, anything, right? Enhancement Pack 0 to Enhancement Pack 8, you can make the one-step upgrade and migration to S4 HANA uh, 1610 or 1709, which is set to be released this month. For those of you that are interested in the, uh, the two-step migration, potentially moving to ERP on HANA and then S4 HANA, that is absolutely still supported. It, is an oper it allows your organization to get HANA into the data center, operate SAP ERP on HANA, and then go through uh, the S4 HANA conversion, which does have some forced innovation. When you move to Suite on HANA, keep in mind that we have no forced innovation, right? We have no, nothing is forced upon us. Fiori is not forced upon us when moving to Suite on HANA. And that's what we're really talking about here today is the forced innovation and the move of a different user experience and what are the tools that we can use uh, to have a better informed uh, end user community when we make that move to S4. Uh, so again, the one-step upgrade and migration is absolutely supported. We've been supporting customers uh, running ERP 6, Enhanced Back 4, Enhanced Back 6, Enhanced Back 7 on DB2, on Oracle, and SQL, and making that direct leap to S4 HANA 1610 and deploying the Fiori UI. Kind of putting together a roadmap of how do you get there. You know, this, uh, this, uh, yeah, I think multiple. If you've seen my webinars before, I like this slide because it's, uh, it's my. Uh, I was riding on a, a subway train in Marta in Atlanta, and kind of looked at the map and said, hey, I could do one of these for SAP. Um, for those of you plotting your path to S4, uh, and then that one step upgrade and migration, there's a, there's a lot of options for customers to prepare you for that migration. Um, many people don't even know that. Uh, before you ever buy S4, you can give it a test drive, right? If we go to the SAP Cloud Appliance Library, cal.sap.com, uh, you can activate a demo instance of S4 HANA whenever you're ready. And on this roadmap down at the bottom, I talk about S4 POCs in the cloud with customer data. When you use the Cloud Appliance Library, you have a dedicated uh, S4 instance in either Amazon or Azure available to you which you can connect to your corporate network, which you can begin loading your data into uh, for 60 days and have an S4 trial system, right? That's that, that conference room pilot, the UI roadshow beginning to talk about, and today's focus is all about the UI. Up top on the roadmap, I talk about using Solution Manager naturally, right? We, we wrote the Solution Manager book. We, we eat our own dog food. We have Solution Manager here as part of our 
uh, Certified Center of Excellence here at Nimble. And you can use Solution Manager to reverse document your business processes in ERP, to define your test scenarios, uh, to uh, help find and reduce your technical table uh, storage, right? You're keeping your IDOC logs and your workflow logs and things like that. You could buy S4, you run S4 for your, uh, your project, and you make that one step upgrade and migration to S4. Right, that is all. This is a, a high-level roadmap of, of, of how you can get this done effectively and efficiently. To my knowledge, there has never been a time in history where an SAP customer is able to prototype a fully working instance of, uh, of, of SAP software without buying it first. Right? We, we know that a lot of times we buy the SAP license and then we install it in the sandbox and we play with it, right? With Cloud Appliance Library, cal.sap.com, you have the ability to, to, to activate an S4 instance that is private, that is for you. It is billable. It's a paid solution, right? You have to have a credit card associated to your Amazon account or Azure uh, in order to do this. But this is the first time in history that you're able to run a fully activated appliance with S4 and Fiori and business objects in the cloud uh, before you actually make a purchase decision. It's a wonderful capability. Now, at the end of the slide you know, on this roadmap, we talk about the one-step upgrade and migration and the weekend cutover with minimal impact on business process operations. That's today's focus, right? How do we ensure minimal impact on business process operations? How do we ensure we have an informed uh, end-user community, a super-user community built out? And how do we use tools to measure end-user adoption and the usage of S4 to keep business processes rolling, right? To keep the business operating, and if we see issues or anomalies, being proactive and reaching out to the business rather than the business reaching out to us and saying, "This doesn't work. These screens don't work for us." Maybe, you know, we all pray that you know our user acceptance testing is is well defined and well executed. Um, um, you know, we, we, we hope that that's done, but, but how do we guarantee that go, uh, go live, right? What, what, what piece of insurance can we buy to help monitor the way people are using the systems uh, to understand that? Now, we have a great question in the chat window uh, that I'm going to try to speak to, but I'll make sure we address it as well. With S4 HANA, uh, this is a good segue to the next slide. With S4 HANA, you have specific areas of forced innovation but it is, in my opinion, uh, overestimated the amount of forced innovation. As an example on the screen here, you see on the left MDO4, MRP require, stock requirements in SAP ERP. When you, move to, when you move to S4 HANA, MDO4 does not go away. And on the screenshot on the right, I have a very good example of MDO4 displayed in Fiori in Fiori 2.0 without any developer activity, without any UI modifications. And this is something that the SAP has done very good. As part of the upgrade to S4, you're going to be moving your kernel to a, a version called 749. As part of the move to S4, you're going to be upgrading the uh, SAP UI ABAP add-on to a specific version that enables essentially SAP GUI HTML to look and feel like Fiori. This transaction displayed on the right is MD04. A Fiori developer did not modify this transaction at all. With Fiori tiles in S4, you can associate Fiori tiles to Fiori applications. Yes, we know that. You can associate a Fiori tile to a SAP GUI transaction, to a SAP GUI ABAP report. Um, you can uh, associate a Fiori tile with an ABAP Web Dim Pro, a Java Web Dim Pro, uh, uh, or even a non-SAP application, right? We've even built Fiori tiles at call service now to enter in tickets. Uh, and to answer the, everybody's, some of the questions we're getting in the chat window, the screenshot on the right is SAP GUI HTML displayed within the Fiori launch pad. And so one of the root questions is, can I move my business to S4 and not adopt Fiori applications uh, or not adopt all? And the answer is yes. Now, there are certain areas where there is forced usage of Fiori. For example, S4 HANA with cash management and treasury, there's, a, so there's transactions and capabilities there that are only in Fiori, not in SAP GUI. But in this scenario, we've had customers move to S4 HANA that were under SOX and JSOX, the Japanese equivalent of SOX compliancy, and they did not want to uh, uh, incur a SOX process audit by moving to S4. 
And so what we did is we, we moved the, the, technically the system to S4, and there is innovation in there, the universal ledger and the, and the simplification of tables, but many of the SAP transaction codes users use are still available. So for the customers that wanted to move to S4 without triggering a process audit, we built Fiori tiles for all of the transactions that the customer's users used, which enabled them to move to S4, and on the end user's Fiori launchpad, they saw the transaction codes that they know and loved and have used for 10 plus years, but we also presented to them the Fiori transactions as part of S4 HANA. And what we're going to get to today is how we can use software to measure our users using the SAP GUI transactions, or are they using the Fiori applications, right? Other than, a, than polling your users or using your super user network to talk about this, how would you actually know what are the transactions people are using? Are they using SAP GUI still, or are they moving on to, uh, on to the Fiori world, right? Uh, the Fiori data Fiori applications. We're going to talk about tools to do that. Now, for the organization that uh, wants to move to S4, <laughs> and wants a blend of SAP GUI transactions and, and Fiori transactions, right? Selectively innovating, selectively deciding what innovations they include. A five to six month project of moving to S4 is very reasonable. We have three projects like this uh, done today where customers have chosen to move to S4. They've chosen to selectively innovate, right? They've chosen to take advantage of uh, shortage of supply applications in Fiori or MRP applications in Fiori or new financial transactions in Fiori. Uh, but in general, they have not chosen to completely throw out every business process that they did in ERP. They chose to selectively innovate, activate specific Fiori applications that are innovative or add some competitive advantage or process efficiency, but continue using SEP GUI transactions through SEP GUI HTML, through Fiori, Again, giving that pleasant user experience, the, 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 the browser independence, uh, the ability to access transactions in, inside and outside the firewall, yes, uh, but again, selectively innovating. And using the selective innovation that I'm talking about, we've been able to you know, get these S4 projects within a five to six month timeline. Now, the big piece that we're talking about today is you know, the often underestimated uh, uh, but never underappreciated uh, component of training material build, training material identification, and end user training. Right? How do we get this done effectively? How do we bring our workforce into the S4 world so that they begin to leverage the applications and the and the and the efficiencies gained with S4 HANA? S4 HANA obviously is <coughs> a software purchase. We know this, but you're also continuing to pay 22% maintenance on the software product, right? So. How do we how do we ensure or how do we help uh, how do we help along the process of end users adopting Fiori applications, right? The new way of doing business, right? From a sales order available to promise check, SAP has done a very good job of highlighting that at SAP ERP, you, in order to create a sales order and do an ATP check, uh, you would need to use three different T codes and have approximately 15 to 20 mouse clicks. With us for HANA and the Fiori applications, it's one Fiori transaction and 10 mouse clicks, right, to kind of get that same process through uh, from end to end. S4 HANA brings innovation, and we need to figure out how do we maximize our, our maintenance, our maintenance dollars to adopt this innovation, and how do we roll this out to the users successfully. In terms of some of the lessons learned, you know, from our projects doing S4, um, end user training directly correlates to the, to the level of innovation you're selected, right? That's, that's a no-brainer. Um, your, as you're planning your S4 HANA rollout and determining your scope as defined through the fit the standard process, uh, you're going to be defining what Fiori applications are going to be deploying. What are the tools and mechanisms we can use to guarantee or measure our users using them and are they using them effectively? Okay. That's, that's one lesson learned. You know, we, we deployed Fiori, but are we able to measure our people actually using it? Another lesson learned is Fiori security is additional workload. Uh, this is an area that, um, you know, is often underestimated. When you move to SAP Fiori and S4 HANA, um, when you move to Fiori and S4 HANA, your security team is going to have additional workload. Uh, in the world of SAP ERP, uh, we have authorizations around T codes, ST code, and then there's auth objects within there. Uh, when you move to Fiori, you're going to have additional authorization objects. You have gateway services, you have launchpad roles, you have launchpad groups, you have Fiori tiles, 
it's additional work. So one thing that everybody needs to take away from an S4 project or, or as you plan your S4 project is that it is reasonable, absolutely reasonable. If you're an organization with 500 to 1,500 users, you will need potentially a full-time security person working with the Fiori team on creating security around the Fiori applications. Right. So that's what, another lesson learned. And then as I kind of highlighted it before, as is process workshops, uh, or, or what I like to call them fit the standard rather than as is. So, um, but the as is process workshops, that's where you're really you're defining your S4 configuration, your S4 scope, the level of innovation you're including. And it's at that point that training material development must start, right? When you are running your fit the standard workshops, determining what to turn on and what not to turn on in S4, because again, there, is, there are areas of S4 which are not forced upon you, uh, you can continue operating your system as is, it's, at, it's in those workshops that your team should be identifying the training opportunities. We are going to begin using these new treasury applications, therefore we need to add a scope item for user acceptance testing for the new application, and B, uh, the training material that needs to be built when we move there. Uh, the Delta training material can take significant time. Uh, end users are used to you know, SAVGUI transactions and the buttons that are there, and, and Fiori works differently. So uh, I'm hoping I've, I've set the stage in talking about uh, S4 release versions, right? Beginning to getting you thinking about the S4 um, product lifecycle, highlighting that 1709 is being released this month, highlighting the fact that, feature, that SAP with each S4 release is going to be offering two feature pack stacks with offer innovation, and then moving into a support mechanism called a support package stack, and where no more innovation is included, just break fixes, and then 1709 is your go-to release. I kind of highlighted uh, the ability to use Cloud Appliance Library and, and, and uh, activating an out-of-the-box S4 system to test drive Fiori applications that's available to SAP customers. Um, I talked a little bit about activating uh, or using your existing business processes in Fiori. Right? Fiori is so powerful. We, we love Fiori applications, but if you're not ready to adopt them all, you can use SAP GUI transactions in Fiori. I've, I've kind of talked about that. And, and, and now I'd like to open it up to, to – uh, we have some additional Q&As just to uh, keep the audience engaged and, and learn more about you. And, and with that, I'm going to move to the next question. Um, before uh, – uh, uh, Jesse, you should be online now. And we have uh, – after these next questions, uh, I'll, I'll pass it off to you. This first question, are you looking to make improvements in your SAP screens using Fiori or Personas? Right, that's like uh, that's like saying you. Uh, uh, everybody wants to improve their screens, right? So we know we know that pe that's a primary driver is the UX. Um, another great question: Have you ever heard of the Web Assistant for S4 HANA? Uh, we're going to be talking about this today. It's a, a feature that is tremendous, adds tremendous value uh to the end user community within s4 and the delivering of training material uh, jesse will be covering that also jesse's jesse's got a lot of work here not many people have heard of the web <laughs> assistant which is great and and do you currently own or use workforce performance builder i'm most interested about this because jesse i i heard you laugh i I, I don't know of another software or, or, or tool for educational content that actually builds the content inside of the Fiori UI and the Fiori Launchpad. To me, it's super impressive. All right, based on the responses, you know, we have a lot of people that don't know about it, which is, so I'm excited to share with you all uh, uh, Jesse's knowledge around the product. And, and, and creating some awareness around this tool that, that I think, I, to me, it, like, uh, outside of PowerPoint, this tangibly brings value to projects, uh, which is, which is tr truly my focus personally, is to make sure that everything we talk about on these webinars can tangibly add value uh, outside of a PowerPoint presentation. And with that, I'd like to pass it over to Jesse. Welcome. Perfect. Thanks, Michael. Um, so yeah, we're going to cover um, a lot of those things that were in those questions that we just asked. 
Um, one of the things that I want to make sure is clear is the tools we're going to talk about today, so some of the things Michael was mentioning, so we talked about user experience management by NOAA, and we talked about Workforce Performance Builder, which has now been rebranded Enable Now. Um, all of those come from the education group within SAP. So uh, when I joined SAP, that's the group that I went into. Um, very often, I don't think people connect education to some of these um, you know, enablement solutions to help you get to uh, your S4 path. Now, a few years ago, so starting in 2016, and I don't know how many of you went to Sapphire, but Bill McDermott made some uh, statements that I think were important because it was the first time it was really mentioned um, at an SAP conference of that size, and it was the empathy for the end users. So from the education group that I'm part of, we focus on how do we make your user's life better within SAP. So when we look at 2017, SAP is really trying to turn that empathy into action. So you're seeing more and more focus on the end user's experience and the tool. Um, yes, we're focused on technology, but now we're also not just focused on how can we make the tool more uh, technology, you know, technology focused, more advanced, uh, more seamless, uh, but also we have to think about the people who are going to use it every day. So when we think about user experience management, and this is where I'm going to start, is really user experience management is a great place to start this journey um, that Michael was just discovering and talking about um, just a minute ago. So when we look at all of the different things uh, within the landscape and why this is important, we talked about you know, the, the fit and what items of S4 HANA do you want to turn on. Um, there's a lot of questions that I think people have around this solution. So as I've been working with large companies across the globe, um, focusing on very large companies within, the, within North America, uh, very often there's this question of what do we really need to turn on and do we have to turn it all on and what pieces and parts do you need, do you need to go first or second. And I think the problem that we have at SAP, and I think all of you know this, is we tell you the answer is yes to all those questions. Do you want to just go ECC on HANA? Sure. Do you want to do S4 HANA on, on HANA? Sure. So right there, there, everything that you ask us, we always say, yeah, you can do that, right? So I think sometimes the problem is, is there's so many options, we don't know which one is the right one for us. So with user experience management, you can deploy a tool that allows um, this, a system to collect information for you to really start to make decisions around this path moving forward of what is the correct path for me based on data. So not this guessing game, not this emotional conversation that we tend to have when we're IT and the business is in the room and we're having a conversation back and forth of what do we want to move first, what's right for us as an organization. Um, you know, with with your partner, with Nimble, you know, involved, they can help in this conversation. And when they have this data, it becomes very, um, very focused and very relevant on, on what are those items you should be moving to. Um, as Michael was talking about, I think some people have this perception when you move to S4 HANA, everything has to be in Fiori, and everything is a Fiori tile, and my T codes go away. As you saw, you have options. There are some customers that we're working with right now that choose to go down an S4 HANA path and continue to use those classic T code look and feel in that Fiori view, um, but they're, te they're, they're making that decision. Um, what you, the UEM data can help with is what parts of those transactions are really getting in the way of the end user. And as the example that you saw, MD04, if MD04 is not really causing a lot of pain, if MD04 is only used by 20 people in your organization, let's not spend the time developing or making MD04 better. If it's okay right now, the point, you know, the clicks that we, we touch are minimal. Um, the amount of time we spend in it per month is minimal. That's all that type of data UEM can provide. So you're going to be able to see how long are they in the transaction, what's the response time like, are they running into error messages, what, are, what fields are they touching, what on the screen is getting in the way if things are getting in the way. So it really takes that noise out. So when we continue to go down this path, and as we talked about the MARTA and this roadmap, that's really what we're trying to make sure we understand. So before your migra migration, just assessing the current challenges and inefficiencies. Are our inefficiencies and challenges really what we believe, right? So very often we have this perception that it's terrible. 
Um, and yes, there's parts, and I, I use the ECC, and there are parts that are very complicated, and there's parts that take a lot to train the end users. So what parts of a business process should we look at the S4 enhancements or the Fiori pieces that may make that point-click um, use of the system easier for your end user? Uh, really looking at uh, migration scenarios. So should we migrate finance first? Or maybe manufacturing is having more problems. Or maybe the, the procurement process or, you know, procure-to-pay process needs more enhancements. So really using the data before the migration to have a concrete plan on where are we going and is our foundation set for success. During the migration, what you're really looking for is using the UEM tool to help you identify as you're, as you're moving down this path. And what you're going to see, when we looked at the old ASAP method, methodology, which some of you I know used in your ECC days or ECR, you know, R3, R4, ECC6 days, we really start to look at more of a scrum methodology or what we call activate methodology, which is more interactive and at a very fast pace of innovation. Um, you need some data to help you understand, are the users able to get through the transactions easier? Is it really less clicks? Is it actually responding faster? Right? So as you start to see these through these very quick test cycles that start happening in your S4 path, are you actually seeing the improvement that you expected to see with this plan that you had before migration? So you can very quickly make these course corrections um, because we're in this more of a, a, an agile methodology to make corrections before we go live, but that process is a lot faster than normal. And then after migration, using the tool to make sure we're, ad we're adopting. So one of the points that Michael brought up, if you leave the new Fiori tile on and you also converted your MDO4, classic MDO4, into just a Fiori tile using MD MDO4, what are people adopting? Are they staying with the old way? Are they going to the new process? Um, can you look at that by demographic? Is it, is it an age difference? So if I look at you know, generations sitting side by side in a workforce, what generation is choosing what technology? Um, what adoption rates are better? Do we have a better close rate? Or when we do look at an order to cash process, do we have less um, debits and credits when we use the four Fury tile versus maybe the classic tile, right? So those are all those types of things that you can start to really use UEM to assess and really drive to are we getting the improvement that we expected to get? Now, from a migration use case, what you're seeing here on the screen, um, some of you may have seen UEM um, in the past when we were only using business objects. So moving forward with the UEM uh, tool or the NOAA tool, there's multiple options. And one of those is uh, Tableau. One of those is Lumera. We have business objects by design. Um, so lots of different ways that you can visualize the data. We do have toolkits that allow you to take the visualizations that we have built and customize them and make your, make your own. Now, when we're looking at the migration use case, what you're going to see here is ranking the transactions in the SAP software by key performance indicators. So looking at highest error rates or the longest response time or degree of complexity. So really looking at maybe it's a budget constraint, right? So very often people will take the most complex process because that's the one causing the most pain, and they'll say, this is what we want to move first. Now, when we start to look at that, that may be the most risk to your company. That's probably going to be the one that's going to cost the most amount of innovation or custom um, work within the S4 Fiori space. So what should we really move first? So maybe there's another area that we're not really focused on that could be turned on with standard S4 functionality, give you benefits very quickly, and be able to get you ROI sooner. So what we like to do there is let's get you some wins and successes. And as Michael was talking about, in these POC environments and the S4 HANA cloud trial systems, you have the capability to try some of these things to go, is this really the right path before you go down that path? And should I really be going for the most complex process first? So then after the migration, compare those KPIs against each other. So what was it in the old days of T-Code? What is it now with Screen, Personas, or Fiori? Really comparing and contrasting, is that better or worse as we move forward? So the UEM tool is really is closing a gap in some of this data monitoring that when we look at Solution Manager and we look at other reporting tools, they tend to go after technical logs. 
The UEM tool is not going after a technical log. It's not a data mining tool. So it's not mining data that exists. It's actually creating data from the user experience. So what is it like from their device? So when I'm on my desktop computer, what is it like for me on my computer in my location versus what does the server log say in the background my experience is? So very often those points of view are very different, um, and that's where we see the UEM data really providing benefit down this uh, S4HANA path. Now, when we look at migration use cases, so the FIOR use case, the SAP UI, UI5 adoption use case, um, really looking for the adoption pieces we talked about, but also correcting the UX design. So when we think about the user experience design or the UI, so the user interface specifically, what is the user experience, right? So are they actually using it? Are they running into problems? Are they actually reporting those back? So very often when you're doing a user interface improvement or a user experience project, you rely heavily on what the customer is telling you. Is it better or worse? So with the UEM tool, because we're focused on the user experience, you're getting that data in a tool that you don't have to go run a survey. You don't have to go sit next to users, and you're getting this view back very quickly on is it working? Are they getting errors? What's actually causing them pain or problems? So I can have a tool to give me that answer, and I kind of can look for those silent sufferers or people who may not want to raise their hand to say, I know you just spent three months developing this, but it's not any better, right? So very often you'll get, you know, you get this perception of it's new, so I like it, or it's new and I hate change, so I'm going to do everything I can possible to make you not go to the new item. So this gives you that, you know, that view without having emotion involved on is it really better um, is my, are my users really able to you know, adopt quicker? Those types of questions you can answer with data instead of a, an emotional or, or personal survey type question uh, that may lead down the wrong path. Now, from an adoption use case, what I like here with the UEM tool is our adoption use case can go beyond just a desktop computer. So now with some of our technology, which is agentless, so we have the idea of agentless monitoring of a UI injection point, you also can start to monitor mobile devices. So a lot of times people go down this Fiori path thinking that, um, my users will no longer use their desktop. They're going to start doing things from their iPhone or they're going to do things from their Android device or tablet. Now, that is true for some features and functions within SAP. So if we think about maybe a general ledger approval of a manager over a certain dollar amount, that absolutely may happen on an iPhone. But when, you, when we think about a customer service center or maybe a manufacturing facility, some of those things may not actually happen in a mobile device, however we develop them to work on a mobile device. So are they really being used there? And is the adoption more on the desktop computer, or is it on the tablet, or is it on the iPhone? Um, you know, I've had companies that I've worked with that invest a lot in mobile technology, assuming that is how we are moving forward with the S4 HANA Play. Um, and they'll see the user adoption really didn't happen on maybe those tablet devices because they needed their desktop computer, and that's really what they use more often than maybe their tablet. So this can really help to understand, am I even investing in the right infrastructure, right? So from an adoption use case, not only are they adopting the technology, but did I invest in the wrong infrastructure to support the technology? So what is really working, and am I going down the right path uh, UEM can help in that space as well um, uh, as we go down. Now, from a training perspective, this is where I'm going to start talking about uh, Workforce Performance Builder, or as it has been rebranded, it's called SAP Enable Now. Um, training use cases, and as we heard Michael talk about, there, there is a gap in this training. So um, when we think about ECC users or R3, R4 users, they have this concept of SAP. They speak an SAP language. They know transaction codes or T codes. Um, and they've become proficient. So when we went live with SAP, you know, some of you a year ago, some of you 10 years ago, 20 years ago, um, they hated it when we went live, and now it's become part of their language. They speak in a T-code language. They know ABAP errors and Abend errors and, you know, uh, PIDs and, and SPRO and all these different codes that people throw around that, you know, you become knowledgeable and you become an expert in this language. From a training perspective, even though Fiori is easier, it can be scary, and it's a change management item. 
I was used to having an execution bar and I had a command line and I could enter a T code and now it's tile driven. That's different for me. Um, icons look different. Icons are in different places. So from a training perspective, what SAP is trying to do and with the UEM tool, where are people really struggling from a training perspective? And you can use this data to really drive down this path. Um, there is embedded in application help within the Fiori application. So if any of you have started to implement Fiori and turned on Fiori, there's actually a part of the configuration guide that's called optional configuration. And in that optional configuration, it's called in application help. That in application help is what we call our web assistant. So what you're seeing here on the screen, you can kind of see an example. It's this green carousel, and it allows for hotspots and guided tours directly on the screen. So SAP is taking an approach of embedding help within our solutions that allow real-time help within the real live application. So if you think about how work instructions or training materials worked in the past, and I'm going to call them old-fashioned training materials where we would take a screen recording, you would print out a document, and it would have instructions. Today, if I would take an instruction document and I see that it's longer than a page, most people are going to say, not for me. I'm just going to go ask Michael who sits next to me because Michael's super smart and he's going to help me just through this. I don't want to go to a work instruction. So what SAP is doing is we're embedding this help with guided tours that can be configured. And these guided tours go on the screen and actually help walk the person through what do I do first, what do I do second, what do I do third. You can have hot spots that just describe items on the screen. Um, so it's a very different approach. The other item from an S4 HANA perspective, SAP is offering you guides and instructions for free. So you're hearing Michael talk about, you know, this is the first time SAP is doing a lot of these things where you have a POC for free. You can go to the cloud trial system for free. Um, when you're in some of these trial systems, so the S4 HANA cloud trial, if you click on, it looks like an icon with a question mark. When you click on that icon, it turns on the web assistant. SAP is providing documents. We're updating documents for you. We want to try to make you adopt the solution and understand how to use the solution without you needing to create that training material. Now, if you own Workforce Performance Builder or now called Enable Now, you have the capability of also modifying, editing, and changing this content. So from the perspective of where is this showing up, SAP Enable Now is starting to be embedded in all these different applications. So we talked about user experience management to help you identify what training needs you have. Then from an Enable Now perspective, we're starting to use this all over within the SAP landscape. So we have a release coming out here soon, 1711 of Enable Now. Um, this will also now be embedded in our success factor solution. So the plan is, is that Enable Now not only is available today in S4 HANA, but it's also going to be the way you get help for success factors, for Ariba, for Concur, for Hybris. So all of our new web solutions um, that have recently been purchased will all have this type of guided tour approach, web assistant guidance within the tool, um, all being used and leveraged through our Fiori technology. So SAP is really starting to, you know, from a strategic path forward, say this is how if you're going to train your users and you're having an adoption problem and their training may be a concern, this is how we're going to get those users there using this uh, web assistant and, and guidance help uh, directly on the screen. So when we look at the different mod modalities or different modes of training that are supported, these are the different modes. I'm not going to go through all of these. I just want you to be aware, yes, we have performance support, which is the guided tours, but it's also for your LMS type content or e learnings or video creation or uh, creating work instructions, creating training environments, testing environments to really play in. Um, it really supports all those different modes. Now, some of the things that I want to cover back to the UEM, user experience management perspective, I want to make sure you understand what is supported. So from an SAP S4 HANA perspective, what are all the different uh, technologies that we actually can monitor? So really when you think about your SAP landscape, moving back to the UEM tool, it can manage and um, measure all the different landscapes. Now from an enabled 
Enable Now perspective. Enable Now is able to work across not only your SAP landscape, but also any non-SAP landscape. So we have customers that are using Enable Now or those web assistant, desktop assistant, guided tour type approach across any and all applications that they may have, where UEM is really more focused on your SAP landscape and providing success there. Now, some of the things that you may not know, so NOAA 72 was uh, available um, recently. It's available today. It is now um, supported on a HANA database, so you may not be aware of that. So NOAA can run on HANA. So if you're going down that path, you can put it in that, um, in that space. Uh, HANA Enterprise Cloud, so really looking at, you know, allowing that deployment to occur in that space as well. Business Objects 4.2 and then the Digital Studio dashboards um, available. And then new monitoring for Fiori 2.0, uh, 2.2, different items within the Fiori space, mobile application success factors, um, all also uh, capable of being monitored. Agentless monitoring is a big deal, um, and it's something I want to make sure that you're all aware of. So from an agentless monitor, what you're going to see is that this allows you to then monitor things like um, mobile devices, so Chrome um, outside of IE, Mac OS, Mac OS, iOS, Android, so a lot of different technologies. Now, the thing that's important to realize here, it's SAP GUI for HTML, SAP Fiori, CRM, SAP Success Factors are the ones that we have agentless monitoring for right now. Obviously, since we're specifically talking about S4 HANA and the SAP GUI, HTML, and Fiori, um, this is absolutely relevant for the conversation we're having. Um, agentless does not um, require something to be installed on the desktop where if you're looking at like ECC monitoring or RC or R4, there is an agent that gets installed to capture data or build that data. So just something to be aware of that I want to make sure you knew about. So as we move forward, um, hopefully, right, you've, you've learned something about the NOAA software or the user experience management software. Really, again, NOAA's really focused on know what works, make sure you have an understanding before you move forward. The SAP Enable Now solution is really focused on um, helping your users get guided um, guidance within, you know, guided tours, training approach. Uh, to your S4 HANA landscape. So when you really look at these two together, um, you know, NOAA is going to be your, your piece to help identify where to go, and then we're going to come over to Enable Now to help maybe help uh, close the gap on adoption or really make sure our end users have what they need to be successful on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're going to move into some questions. I'm going to hand it back over here to um, Michael um, to go through uh, these next couple slides. Um, and it looks like there's one question right now, is UEM free of, is a free or a charged product? So user experience management is a charged product, so there is a, it is a purchase. Um, depending on what you want to do, there's cloud or on-prem versioning, so price can be um, flex, you know, fluctuates depending on the solution or approach you take. Hey, Jesse, just to jump in there, I mean, uh, you know, yeah. uh, just to hit everybody's expectations, you know, this is not a, uh, a product that has two commas in it, just to let everybody know, number one. You know, there, there, as with everything, there's a, there is a comma, right, involved with the price, and we can't talk about pricing on the phone, but it is a very reasonably priced product in the cloud-managed scenario where essentially – it runs in Azure or Amazon or SAP's cloud, and, and you connect it to your on-premise systems. Uh, it is a very reasonably priced tool, in my opinion, compared to these projects that we're running for S4, right? Your, your S4 purchase, your 22% maintenance, your HANA hardware, the project activities. Uh, I mean, the, the, the price of UEM is not even going to be a blip on the radar uh, compared to those charges. Now, I, you know, just, Jesse and I, we, we both talk fast, so I hope everybody stayed awake. Um, and we covered a lot of content here. I wanted everybody to really understand that you have passive collection of data around the end user's activities in SAP, right? We figure out how often are they getting these warning messages? How often are they getting an error? You know, do they need retraining? Or does the, is, if everybody is having a problem with a purchase requisition application, then more than likely it's not the, the people that are broken, right? It's the application that is broken. And, and, and for whatever reason, in that scenario, the business doesn't like or, or isn't able to use that application effectively. So how do you get to know that, right? You, you'd have to have a, a very data-oriented, complex super user network in order for IT to get that feedback. But with software tools, we're able to 
uh, you do some analysis and gather that information that we need around how are people using it, what warning messages are they, use, uh, are they receiving, are they getting errors, how often are they spending in the application, what facility is spending more time than this facility, what user group or user base or by role. You're allowed to, you can segment the users and do a lot of analysis around the, the how people are using S4. This is, you know, when talking about building the business case for S4, how do you report back to the CFO or the CEO or the controller that says, we achieved the value that we planned, right? We wanted to improve processing of incoming products or outgoing or transportation of outgoing products. We wanted to improve that processing. How do you validate that, right? Obviously, the top line revenue number is one, but another number could be supported by UEM here showing that end users used to spend this much time doing this task, and now they're spending this much time doing it the new way. And so super, super cool. Uh, I think it adds a lot of value. Now, uh, in terms of uh, we have contact information for Jesse and I. We have some additional slides at the end of the deck that talks about some free tools and trials that you will all receive as part of this. Uh, but we wanted to hit some, some questions. Um, can a technical upgrade to S4 be done without changing business process? How can you upgrade, uh, upgrade this magnitude of minimal business impact? Uh, that's a very good question. And I'm pasting a link in the, uh, in the chat window. I'm going to do a broadcast to all. Uh, this support site lists uh, out the, uh, the forced and optional changes between ERP releases and S4 releases. So in this, in this tool, uh, you can click uh, uh, show advanced, I believe, is the first thing that you see, and then you can click filters, and you can say show me all the differences in FI uh, between S4 uh, ERP6 enhanced by 6 and S4 HANA. Now, you know, the, the root question here is how can it have minimal impact on the business? And, and the answer is, is SAP did a very good job of the simplifications and enabling both use of new and old transaction codes. There are areas of forced innovation, and I'm using those words very specifically. You do have to mine upgrade to the universal ledger. When you do that in finance, does that mean you have to activate document splitting? No, it's not forced, not at all. Uh, do you have to activate parallel ledgers if you don't use them today? Nope, not forced. Do you need to activate costing-based COPA? No, not forced. Um, uh, these are things that you all will have to explore, and you can do so with the Cloud Appliance Library. So I'm hoping I answer that, some of that question. It's obviously a very complex question. Another, um, is transaction measurement done through Solman? And Jesse, uh, you know, I, I believe the answer here is no. The, the, the data collection done by user experience management is using either the agentless mode or the agent that, it, that is deployed. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Great. And, um, you know, is it, you know I, the David Hill had a very similar question. Is it using STO3N? And that is no, don't, no that is not the answer. Um, it is collecting data through actual agents or a, monitoring of user sessions, right? So it's me actively measuring what the user is actually uh, doing. And then we have another question here. Uh, which version of S4 is when finance and logistics have been implemented together? Uh, all versions of S4 are supported by your product, uh, by the product, Jesse. Uh, I believe that is correct. Correct. Um, and again, all versions of S4, including 1709, uh, can be explored in that link I sent you where you can explore the simplifications implemented, and you can also uh, put in a delta source and target. Uh, there was another question here around, um, do you have any documentation of integration between ServiceNow and Fiori and S4? Uh, really, that was an anecdotal uh, just response of, I can build a Fiori tile that can call any web application. I think what Jake and I will do is we'll go ahead and build a, uh, a YouTube video around that just to show everybody how to, how to build a, a Fiori tile that points to a non-SAP application. But uh, pretty simple. Fiori is very powerful, very flexible. Another question yeah, one of the from, other things. Uh, go, go ahead, Jesse. Yeah, I was going to say one other thing, too, on the STO3N conversation there from David. Um, the, the data that's different is, um, so if you think about what's an STO3N, there, there is, you know, T-code type information, usage information, and time. Um, some things that are different with NOAA, you're going to have idle and active time. So not only just active time, but also where they end the transaction but not doing anything. So you have idle, active. Um, and then you're going to go a little bit deeper than just the T-code level. So you're going to go T-code and then screen, and then from screen to field, from field to any error messages, info message, system message. Um, and then you're also going to know response time of each operation or click. 
So it's just more granular data than what you're going to find in STO3N. All right, we also had a question of uh, can this presentation be provided? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Everybody will receive a fully edited copy of this. So if you uh, missed anything, uh, fear not. Everyone uh, within the next uh, 24 hours, give or take, will receive a fully edited copy of the presentation. And at this point we're going to, to uh, having Jesse had uh, spoken about uh, UEM by NOAA. Uh, it's just a pretty general question. Do you think SAP uh, UEM by NOAA can provide uh, value to your organization? We'll give people a little bit of time to fill that out. Looks like we're getting a lot of positive responses on that. Yeah, I think I think just I mean just talking about it uh, aloud. I mean, this helps validate your business case when you go to S four, right? I mean, um, the, there's there's perception and then there's reality, right? And a lot of times on a go live, um, maybe security roles aren't right, uh, right? Everybody has security issues on go lives, and the perception can be that the software doesn't work. But once you get over those hurdles, how do you continue to reinforce the message to the business of? Look, things are better. This used to take it this long. Now it's taking this long, uh, and I don't know of another way to do that other than obviously, you know, top line revenue generation is one. But uh, using UEM to to validate those those assumptions you made in the beginning, and then uh, reporting back out the back with those. And in terms of the POC URL, it's cal.sap.com. I'm gonna I went ahead and uh, put that out in the chat window. Uh, and it's 60 days, not six months. Uh, just a qu quick disclaimer there, as if he would kill me if uh, I said that there were six-month trials for S4. Not, not that long. <laughs> I don't know if we have a little bit of time left. Uh, I think we have about four or five minutes. Again, feel free to type in any questions that you have. Uh, see if we have time to run through the free tools. Sure, yeah, I'll go through some of them real quick. So um, what you're going to see in the free tools that are here, um, when you get the slide deck, you're going to see um, if you want to actually try and see what would the Web Assistant look like and feel like, sapfioritrial.com, absolutely free. No, you don't even have to sign up for registration. You can just put in the URL and get there. Um, when you click on this question mark, you'll see it's highlighted. You'll get this carousel that pops up. Um, this is that in-application help uh, for Fiori. Uh, feel free to try it. Um, it's, it's uh, interesting to see how it interacts, how it would work, but you can kind of understand how this changes the game from a training perspective. Um, the S4 HANA Cloud Trial System, um, lots of free training here. So if you've never been in S4 HANA uh, before, um, the S4 HANA Cloud Trial System, as soon as you go in, it's all those guided tours that are built with the Web Assistant or Enable Now. The Learning Corner has um, classes that you could actually start to give to your end users today. So getting them to understand what is different. How does the launch pad work? How do I use Fiori? Um, what is it like to enter you know, a general ledger? What is it like to be project management? So the, the cloud trial system, this is a 14-day trial system. I will tell you, you can renew this every 14 days um, and continue to learn and, and gain uh, more knowledge on that is available there. Uh, also, OpenSAP.com if you have not been there. Um, OpenSAP.com, lots of free information around S4 HANA. You'll see um, over kind of on the left-hand side, OpenSAP courses. So S4 HANA in a nutshell, S4 HANA deep dive use cases, implementation of S4 HANA, lots in this space. So if you've never gone to um, OpenSAP.com, uh, again, all free learning that you can uh, participate there as well. So just a few free, free tools that I wanted to make sure you were uh, aware of. All right, unless we have any other questions, looks like we're just under the, uh, the hour mark. We crammed in a lot of great information in a, uh, a limited amount of time. So I definitely want to say thank you so much to, uh, to Jesse and Michael for uh, a highly informative webinar. I do ask uh, that as you leave, um, you will see a comment section. We'd love to hear what you, what you liked, what you thought uh, 
uh, we could improve upon um, and uh, what you appreciated and actually what you'd like to see in the future because we are a nimble lecture series and we cover a lot of different topics. So we want to know what you want to see. Uh, so on that, I'm going to say thank you again to Jesse and Michael and thank you so much for everybody who attended. Uh, have a great weekend. <laughs>